Hey everyone, welcome to Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen. My name is Ani, and today I'm going to bring you a recipe for your leftover turkey. Okay, what to do with all of that goodness that you don't want to go away, so you want to try something different instead of the same old, same old. So let me tell you what I go, got going on here. I bought a bag of mixed, of frozen mixed vegetables. It's got green beans, corn, carrots, potatoes. Um, it's got all kinds of deliciousness in here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, you see all that? It's got peppers in there, green and red peppers. What I did was I took... Um, the drippings from the turkey, I put it into jars. I got two jars full of all that good stock and, and fat. And I put it in here with about a cup of water. And then I put my vegetables, my frozen vegetables in there. I have shredded the first casserole of leftover turkey because I've got another one. I have some. Not a full one like this one. So I've shredded that, and I'm going to toss this into the pot also. I'm going to let that go ahead and boil a little bit. And what I'm planning to do is make turkey pot pies, turkey vegetable pot pies. And I got me these cool little containers that I'm going to bake them in and just prepare them and possibly freeze them, but I'm going to do that for a hub shirt so he can take to lunch. And I'll, you know, well, we can have one eat for dinner and stuff like that. So that's what I'm planning on as far as with the leftover of my uh, turkey meat. So um, all you need is the dough. So make yourself some dough really quick. And I have recipes for that. Just look up the videos for either my bread recipe or my pie recipe or um, what's the other one? The pizza, whatever kind of dough you want. You know, I would suggest a pie, a thick pie crust on the bottom because the soup has got a lot of juice in there. Even though we're gonna thicken the stock up, it's still a wet meal. So you want a, a good thick bottom crust and maybe just a light cap over that, you know, over the top, a light cap of crust over the top. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and make my crust and I'll be back. But let me show you, or uh, let me go ahead and put this in the pot. It's hot enough now. Okay. Just put this meat right in there with the rest of it, with the vegetables, and we'll worry about seasoning after we get that good stock in there and we taste what we got. And then we'll add. Of course, I will be putting in some sofrito and adobo, but as far as the other spices, um, not sure yet. I'm going to see what kind of taste I'm going Because the gravy that I'm going to make, it's going to be flavorful. So that should take up a lot so of the flavor. And I don't want to lose that either. I don't want to take away from it. Okay, because that's what it, I don't know about you, but pot pies for me, the gravy is everything. You know? And there you go. It's got nice and thick already. You see that? Alright, I may need to add the other jar of stock, looks like, but we're going to go ahead and mix all this together, all this goodness together, and of course, you know what I like about homemade pot pies? That they're medium. <laughs> You've got more meat than vegetables as opposed to the store-bought which is more vegetables than meat, huh? Yeah, they are, but that's okay. It's, they still take, they do a pretty good job. Some of them do. Some of them are blind. You can't see the, the meat or anything. Hold on just a second here. Uh, 
I've got all this skin and stuff that I'm going to throw out to the cats up back. Yeah, it's time to change their winter box up on the hill. We prepare a winter box for them. And so that way they have a place to stay warm. I don't know who all uses it. We don't have a camera on it or anything, but that would be a thought, huh? To find out how many wildlife's go in and out of the box we make. And it's a winter box, so that means it's well insulated outside and in for all kinds of weather. Uh, basically, we take a hef heavy duty or a hefty, um, that thick, almost tarp like plastic bag, and we uh, wrap a box. We wrap that, uh, uh, we wrap, use that to wrap a box in. All on the outside, we cut door, we cut a little uh, door, you know, for them to come in and out. And we fill the box up with, you know, old towels and rags and stuff like that, or blankets. So that's how we're in the boxes. And we usually put it up on the hill in between the trees where they have privacy. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. I'll be right okay so I went ahead and did that I threw that meat out there for him and this is coming along just nicely oh it smells so good in here I need a knot make such a mess. That's what I need not do. I got a heavy hand sometimes, I'll tell you. All right. So, I am going to use a can of cream of potatoes and a can of cream of chicken to thicken this up and flavor it. Then I'm going to put my spoon of sofrito, just to add that little Puerto Rican touch, and some adobo. to get the other jar of turkey stock so that's good because I can use that for another day for another dish okay blend that right on in there look at that already coming together real nice hmm okay now goes in the cream of potatoes This will give it the starch it needs to thicken up. gravy all right and that'll thicken up that looks good already let's see um sofrito just a oh my god this smells so 
good. Mmm, so frito. <laughs> All right, that's in there. One tablespoon. One heaping tablespoon, I should say. Oh, this is going to give us such good flavor. Oh, gosh, the smell. It just changed the smell in the kitchen already. Just took over. <laughs> ah. Smells like una casa de borinquen. Smells like a Puerto Rican house. All right, so okay, put some cilantro, a teaspoon of that, a little bit of Maggie, chicken bouillon, gives it some more Spanish flavor. Okay, a tablespoon. And then, of course, we've got to do our little sprinkle across and back of a Goya adobo. Okay. So I'm going to lower this heat. I'm going to put some basil and a little bit of cumin. Okay. And that's it. That's it for my seasoning. I'm going to taste it for salt, though. I do have to do that. All right. Let's give this a taste. And taste the stock. It's hot. Oh, oh my god. That tastes just like Popeye does. Alright. As in with all sauces, I am going to throw in a little bit of sugar. About oh an eighth of a cup. It kills the acidity. Usually if the sauce is red, I use brown sugar. If it's a white sauce, I use white sugar. Let's try this taste again. Ah, oh, much better. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's it. That's all she wrote. I'm going to let this simmer. I've got it on low, okay? And I'm going to let this simmer and let it get nice and thick. And we'll come back. And I'll have the um, pie crust already in the tin. All right. Now, again, I have a video on how to make pie crust. So just go to that. And while this is simmering, go ahead and make your dough. Real quick. It's a one, two, three recipe. Real easy. Okay. All you need is flour, butter, and ice water. That's pretty much it. So go for yours. Make your pie crust dough. And uh, meet you back here shortly. Okay, guys, I've got my dough, my pie dough, and I let it rest. Okay, it's gonna be nice and flaky, I can tell already. Okay, so I've got these little dishes here. I need to open this up. 
get rid of this trash. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how many of these I can line up because I have to make the bottom and top crust. So I may have to make some more. I'm sure I will. Pie dough. That's okay. I can do a little bit every day and freeze. But right now I want to make three of them at least. Well, if not two, so that helps I can take one to work tomorrow and have one for dinner tonight with some rice and salad and whatever else is like left over from Thanksgiving. So here's my little tin. So I'm going to take a piece of this pie dough. I'm going to cover the rest. I use this plastic so that it doesn't dry out on me. Just right there. And grab just a little bit of flour just to work with. So, what I really want is a square, don't I? Like a rectangle. So that's what I'm going to aim for. Be careful with my rolling pin. I need to order a small rolling pin. All I have is this big monster. Quick you for now. Okay, so you're just going to roll out the pie dough. So, I don't want it too thin. Because, again, we've got wet liquid. So, see what we have here. Okay, then we're going to always deck the bottom, and then the 
sides. going to so this is my first pan and I'm gonna make a top to go over but I I want it to just be flat so I can't fill this too much just to the first rim and that way I could put a layer of pastry on top of that of crust on top of that so I'll be right back let me go ahead and get a couple of these done and I'll be right back Okay, I have made enough for three, so let's go ahead and make these. Finish them, I mean. I have enough dough left over to do a topper, and I will be trimming this. Let's go ahead and fill these trays. So remember, you want it to the first rim. So that's good for that one. Let's move on to the next one. One, two, three. This is really easy. All right, there's two. And the very last one. And then the rest of this, I'll freeze it and I can uh, either make some more at another time or uh, make another dish with it. Another kind of dish. All right, so there we have it. We have our three. Now all that's left, I'm going to trim this after I put the top pastry on there. So let's go ahead and cover that. We're done with that. We're done with that. So with the rest of the pie dough, we're going to make some thin covers for it. But you could basically just do it with your hands. I mean, seriously, it's it's not hard at all. You know, just pinch it, pinch it, pinch. But I'm gonna use a rolling pin for the sake of time. But if you don't have a rolling pin, you can do it with your hands. Just put it down on a flat surface and use your fingers. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to use the rolling pin. Okay. And the very first one is going in. See? Now, time to cut away at the excess. Okay, and then we're going to kind of roll this in. Okay, just kind of pinch and roll. 
pinch and roll roll and pinch I should say you roll the outside layer dough into the inside layer dough make sure you're watching this so that you can see this good okay You can freeze these like this, just like this, or bake them right away. Okay, and there you have your pot pie. Your turkey pot pie, there's the first one. Now, don't forget, you've got to make a little hole in the middle or a couple of them let me see what I can do here okay Got holes. All right. And this pot pie is ready. I'm going to put it in the oven. Uh, let's see, bake. At 350. Actually, yeah, 350 is good. Well, you know what? I'm going to do 375. That's what I'm going to do. And let that oven heat up while I put the cover on the other two. And I'll bring you back once it's baked. Okay, folks. Well, here it is. The three uh, turkey pot pies. And... I still have a little bit left, uh, not too much left of the uh, the filling, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the fridge, and I'll make two more tomorrow and put them in the freezer. But there it is. Look how delicious that looks, huh? Nice and flaky. Oh, yes. Bubbly rich. Look at that goodness that gravy mm -hmm. so that's one idea for your leftover turkey so go on and make yourself some those little trays right here i got them on amazon um i think you get 50 i don't know how much i spent for it i can't remember I've had it for a I had them in the shelf for a couple of months. But if you go on Amazon, you'll find them. And they're really neat, especially when you have dinner, uh, um, a dinner event, and you want, you know, the food to go, like people to take stuff home so you don't have too much to pack away. Well, these are great because they pack their whatever they want in one of these things, and they're great for travel. They come with lids. So, yeah. It's a good investment to have. But anyway, those are my turkey pot pies, y'all. So make yourself some. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. If so, please give me a thumbs up. And smash that subscribe button. And ding, ding, turn on that notification bell. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new recipe. All right, until the next one. You all take care. God bless. Take care of yourselves first and then one another. Bye!